Good evening, and welcome to another one of my episodes of A Verse A Day Keeps the Muslims Away. Today, again, I'm not going to be using the Quran, and as I will be talking about marriage, al zawaj. In Islam, under Sharia law, marriage is a fascinating process for both the woman and the man. However, it's far more exciting for the woman. And you'll see what I mean in a little bit. First of all, when a man sees a woman that he wants to marry, of course he has to ask for her from her parents. Her parents then set the dowry. Okay? They set how much the husband, the future husband needs to pay. But, the, but keep in mind they set two different dowries. Al-Mu'addam and Al-Mu'akhar. Al-Mu'addam is the money paid up front. And Al-Mu'akhar is money paid when the woman is returned to the house. Essentially when she's divorced. So now we've set two prices for the woman and the husband has paid the mu'addam and now they're married. Wonderful. So imagine now they're living together and the woman's unhappy and she decides to leave her husband's house and just go stay at her mom's house for a couple of days. It happens. It happens to a lot of people. You know, newlyweds. The husband then has the right to go to the courts and under, under Sharia laws he can bring his wife back to the house in something using something called Bayt al ta Bayt al ta is the house of obedience or house of submissiveness. This is where the police go and grab the woman from where she is, bring her to her husband's house, and now she is under house arrest. This is called Beit al ta and every single Arab out there, you know what I'm talking about. Now, there are actually rules and regulations as to what can and what what can she and cannot have in Beit al ta Generally, when she is placed under these rules and regulations, she is supposed to be in a room by herself. She's not supposed to have any of her family members, any of her husband's family members, and any of the family members of her darra. And al darra is the other wife of the husband. So in case the husband has three or four wives, you know, she, she's supposed to be secluded from everyone. Now, while she is under Beit ta she may leave the house only with the permission of her husband. And when she leaves the house, she is expected to return, you know, with a certain curfew. And this keeps going on until he goes back to the court and, to, you know, releases her from Beit al Ta. Once she's, once she's become obedient and submissive enough to where you don't need the police to enforce it. Alright, let's take the same couple. Now, let's say they have two children. I don't know, a three-year-old and a four-year-old. Three-year-old boy and a four-year-old girl. And the husband now decides to divorce the woman. <clears throat> Let me backtrack a little bit. Before you get married, there's something called al-asma. Al-asma is the power to divorce the other person. By default, al-asma is in the hand of the husband. Now, now, it is possible for a woman to demand that al-asma to be given to her to where she can divorce the husband. But it's very rare and I've only seen it in certain movies. Um, <clears throat> now, when, when the husband is going to divorce the woman, all he needs to do is say, Talit, 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 or Talit bil Talata. Say, you're divorced, you're divorced, you're divorced, or you're divorced three times. Once you say that word three times, 
the woman is divorced and that's it and at which point she has to leave her husband's house and go back to her parents house now being that he has returned the merchandise there's a restocking fee that was the muakhar that we talked about earlier the second part of the dowry so he has to pay her family you know the other part of the money that they had agreed upon and yes it's very generous you know that helps her get get back on her feet now her children the three-year-old and the four-year-old you know what more than likely the husband's not gonna want them however if he wants them he can have them however the courts under Sharia law allows the woman to have the children isn't that nice until until the boy turns seven he goes to his father's house and until the girl turns nine she goes to her father's house so you now have this mother that has been tortured trapped in a room by herself has had, had been divorced had raised two children one to the age of seven the other till the age of nine and now she has to relinquish them and give them up because now they belong to the father that just burns a mother's heart that just breaks your heart uh, and I don't know of any of you out there how can you even agree to doing that um, I was reading about Beit al -Tah earlier the house of submission the house of obedience and I just noticed that uh, <clears throat> Kuwait uh, had you know had some issues with it so they changed the name instead of Beit al -Ta to Beit al -Zawjiya, the house of the wife problem solved now it's, it's the same rules and everything but they just say they just give it a better name and it sounds better alright you have a good evening and I'll see you guys later.